Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 3v4 on Colin Bell and it was a 3v4 you guys are probably wondering because uh, somebody left just before the game started in the lobby which is something that you used to not be able to do but I think uh, basically they changed the servers around a bit and so for whatever reason the lobbies have the server code for the 10v10s which means that games still start even if people lose or leave at the last second but either way um, I wasn't particularly phased I was perfectly fine with the 3v4 as long as my uh, teammates were as well and as you can see I am going to be playing the 9th Panzer today in this one so I was pretty confident that with the extra points I had on hand that I could make a big difference the great thing about the 9th Panzer is it's such a versatile division. It has like a really sort of, it's a really standard sort of division, but it, it does everything. Like it's got flam panzers, um, it's got like your your standard sort of looks, um, 20 mil auto cannon sort of pushes, you've got a decent amount of infantry and uh, decent veterans on your infantry late game, you've got the AT you need, you know, you've got pretty much everything you need to, to make it work and alongside the you know extra income that we're going to be getting we've also got the extra um, availability just slightly anyway so we basically spread ourselves out it's myself uh, groom or groom or grew MSI sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong and uh, Siladar again Siladar playing with me I think in the like last three games just uh, kept joining the lobbies that I was in and uh, we kept playing I mean I, I think I played these games like in the morning when there was like barely anyone on so it, it was basically like the same people in like every game but on the opposing side we have uh, Charge Nihon in the 4th Armoured we've got Kodron with the Guards Arm and Sky Papa with the 3rd Canadian and Chris with the 101st so yeah we've split the map in three between us we have the uh, 352nd in the mid and the third force you may get on the right side so i think the 352nd really nice division for holding this sort of ground works well with the pack 38 ig combo um Siladar on the right side third force you may get might struggle a little bit he can take the town nicely but um on this far right side if he's getting engaged on from a distance it could be a bit of an issue especially over like this ground here it's kind of a, a annoying for the um third force you may get to deal with because they don't have any substantial um, AT until the later phases. But yeah, with myself, I'm basically going to be trying to focus on capturing the factory early from this side of the map. If you're quick about it and if you play it well, you can actually take over the entire factory very quickly. And that's kind of what I was looking to do at the start of this game. Now aside from that, I've got an AT gun for the left, an AT gun for the right. That's just to protect this road. Um, same with the left side, just to protect this road. I'm going to be supporting those with my uh, command unit. So I've got actually a Panzer II to accompany this uh, AT gun. Then I've got the 251.9 with the command infantry on the left side. I've also got a Panzer Grenadier to hang out in the trees there. That has a Panzerfaust at 150 meter range, can hit anything on this road, as well as mow down infantry that comes into the open. So that's pretty much it in the in the uh, factory here. Just going to be doing pretty much a quad sort of Panzergren start with the command infantry and then the Flam Panzer. Now I guess if I had less points to work with, I probably wouldn't have brought in the mortar. Um, or maybe just a, not brought in a couple of squads of the Panzergrens because instead of starting with 500 points in this game we started with 633 because the remaining points from the player who's not in the game get spread between the rest of the players so you're not ever really at a disadvantage um, other than having one less brain to work with and I mean I very much like relying on myself in these games and um, I don't rely on my teammates too much. So having one less person to rely on worked well for me. Um, I like playing the 4v4s though because it does shake things up a bit. Especially if somebody on your team isn't as skilled as somebody on the enemy team. It kind of uh, 
allows you to play a lot more of a fun game because you have to kind of um, play multiple parts of the map, which I think is is really fun. And a lot of you guys say that like some of my teammates don't do too much sometimes, but uh, at the end of the day, um, it makes for an interesting game. So that's all I really uh, worry about. So let's just uh, speed it up a little bit, get this game started. And uh, we will look at where our teammates are placing their units, where I'm placing my units, and uh, carry on from there. I'm not going to speed it up too much, just because in these replays at the moment, there's like some real bad like speed lag. Like if you speed it up too fast uh, for too long, then like when you slow it down again, it doesn't actually slow down the game. But yeah, here we go. You can see that I've spread out quite nicely. Got a series of uh, different routes here for my Panzer Grenadiers and supporting units. Pretty much explained that side. Let's have a look in the mid. So my teammate actually doing really well here with his spread as well. He's actually starting with a couple of uh, flax at the start. These flak 38s, 1,000 meter range. Quite an interesting uh, investment at the start, alongside the uh, classic uh, Pac-38 and uh, IG combo. Although it looks like he's going to be relying on a couple of mortars, as well as just infantry and panzerfausts for the majority of his engagements. Over here we've got a Siladar doing the Fallschirmjäger Flammenwerfer push, which is nice. He's actually just used the Fallschirmjäger Dares to take out the AEC, which is great in the town. And here I'm coming up against a little bit of an engagement. Chris managing to get the airborne leader into the factory, and I do get bombed out by the P-51 Mustang. But uh, the Flampans are still very much okay, and I do have the 251-9 to provide fire support still. So... Panzer Grenadiers are pushing forwards very aggressively onto the airborne rifles, which seem to have been unloaded uh, quite far back. So I'm really trying to take advantage of this, move my Panzer Grenadiers as far forwards as I can. Now here, just smoking off the Panzer II to stop it getting shot at by the Hellcat so that it can naturally fall back. Meanwhile, moving the Pack 38 forwards through the tree line to maybe try and take on the Hellcats and the Abrams here. So, yeah. The 4th Armoured player doing the double Hellcat Abrams at the start instead of the double M4 Abrams. Which is, I guess, two ways to start the... Like, yeah, two ways to start with the 4th uh, Armoured. You can either go double M4 with the, M with the M4 105 mils, that is, with the M4 um, command. Or you can do double Hellcat. I don't have two Hellcats in my division, personally, but... Um, yeah... It's interesting that people do rely so much on their armor early on. My 251-16 here can actually get into range to uh, flame the airborne rifles, unfortunately. But I do have two 251-9s here, and they have nine HE each, so I make short work of the M3 gun once I get those on line of sight. I've also got the uh, mortar carry here. That's uh, pinning down those airborne rifles that were pushing towards the factory. I still have to be quite uh, a little bit worried here because I didn't actually kill off the airborne too much. Like if I go over to the neutral perspective, you see the airborne rifles are still very much alive. Um, so still quite a big threat there that could push into the factory. So I'm going to have to bring up some reinforcements and quickly just to solidify my position here because if he gets in some mortars like he is now, he could pin down my rifles and run them down with the... Uh, he could pin down the pa Panzergrens and run them down with his airborne rifles. Right, meanwhile, however, engagement still going on between uh, Siladar and Kodron in the town. He's uh, doing quite well there. Unfortunately, his Flammenwerfer was killed off. But that's a, a nice engagement area for the third Volschmjäger. Um, the 352nd player on my team, he was really, really doing well as well. Just sort of using his infantry presence and the ambushing capability of these panzer treks to just get a lot of presence forwards. Meanwhile, on the right side, though, things not doing particularly great. Um, Siladar, a bit thin on the ground on the far right, but I'm focused very much on the left side, and I think I can break through here, so I basically just continue to reinforce myself rather than try and play other areas on the map. So, strafing B-26B coming in. 
onto the pack 38 there doing a little bit of damage to the gun pinning it down for sure being pushed still by these airborne rifles and the airborne engineers but what I'm going to do is move up the Panzer 1C to help out you can use both the EW141 and the MG34 to fire at those airborne rifles so that's what I was looking for there. Panzergrens are going to get pinned down by the B26B as it comes around for another strafing run so going to have to retreat that and here comes the bombs from the P51 which is going to force back my Panzer 1C. A B26B Marauder I mean this this Flak 37 or Flak 36 37 mil combo at the start was actually a really really nice idea because as you can see it's going to deal with the uh, Marauder here and normally it's, these Marauders they just fly around constantly at the start of the game there's nothing you can do about them but having two 37 mil AA at the start really really nice it means that that fourth armored player is going to have to think about what he wants to do next so this pack 38 gets into range of the M4 engaging at maximum range though so the penetration is not really there it's like 2% chance to penetrate so M4 is just going to finish that off Panzer Grenadiers dropping out in the open there didn't want the uh, truck to get killed two pack 38s firing at these Hellcats though and we're going to be forcing those to fall back and presence is just being made across the board here plus one for us so Panzergrenz going to be finding an enemy a T gun the N3 gun there going to be pinning it down very quickly with the 251.9 and well goodbye to that M3 gun I moved over my 251.9s from the factory to the far left side so that I could push with them up the river because with so much infantry and focus put on the factory by all of this infantry and the mortars coming up and the, the AT guns here I thought that I might be able to like take advantage of a small push on the left side to make some ground so that's what I was looking for there meanwhile I am still probing up the road with the uh, Panzer Grenadiers still got the Pack 38s here um, covering up as well so if the Hellcats come into line of sight we can uh, smash them you can see the 251.9 really great fire support weapon for helping deal with like enemy infantry at range those airborne engineers they take a step too close to the Panzer 1C gonna be mowing them down very very easily ME109 rocketing the enemy mortar there I think I managed to kill one of them. The other one remained alive. Still pinned down though. That's a lot of mortars. And like I was saying, if they can mortar and pin down my Panzer Grenadiers, then pushing up with these rifles isn't so much of a bad idea. But thankfully, Panzer Grenadiers have plenty of MG ammunition to continue to pin down these airborne rifles as they get close. And the Panzer 1C is just there to finish them off with that nice lethality they have. So ideally what they need to do is uh, like mortar these units out of position, kill them off with the M3 gun and the M4. They do manage to get the shot with the M4 onto that tank, which was unfortunate. And they do take out the half-track as well. But... Um, Yeah, what they need to do is like take care of those units and now they can push, like the airborne engineers, airborne rifles, they need all of them in conjunction at the same time to push with the support of the mortars, but as you can see, mortar is going to be taken out there, the 251.9 is actually getting into line of sight, and uh, this 251.2, my mortar carrier, is now also dealing with the M3 gun there. So because I'm so aggressively pushing on this left side, taking advantage of their not being too much defense over here I'm able to get line of sight onto these mortars which have to be placed so far forwards because they have such short range Mustang trying to make my half track fall back but probably should have focused on one of the looks or the Panzer 1s 
also just sitting there doing the job. And with the amount of forces that I have access to, like pointing them in the right direction works out really, really well. Like I can make my own concentrated pushes when I have like the extra income coming in. The Plan pounds are there winning out against airborne engineers, those airborne engineers as well. Yeah, they're not going to be having that much of a great time. A few loser pounds are going to do a unit to some rifles and the sporting units, but I'm not too concerned. I'm going to get my 251.9 out of the way of these enemy tanks. But the M22s coming in and doing the job. M1919 going to be killed off in the forest or the trees there. Pans 2 looks and Panzer 1C going to be trying to make short work of the Pathfinders before they can reload their AT. Unfortunately, we just about make them surrender before they get a kill. Now, with these M22s, they have really low armor. So what I'm trying to do here is, like, potentially ambush the M22s. That's what I'm looking for. There's still a plus one on the board for our team. And if I can continue the pressure on this left side, then I'll be in a really good spot. Unfortunately, lose a Panzer 1C there for free. And with my Pack 38 getting into range of these M22 looks, I kind of think use that as an opportunity to push up hard with the Panzer 1. Pack 38 gets the kill onto one of the M22s. They take out my Panzer 1, but the looks is on target. Takes out the M22 close very easily. And then I'm just going to continue to engage the M22 across the river. I mean, worst case, all that's going to happen is the Lux is going to die. And I just move the Panzergrens forwards and maintain the front line. But best case, take out the, the M22 and get a really nice opportunity to push on through. So now Chris has surrendered. Like after those M22 locusts is dying, I think he pretty much lost faith in what he was doing and uh, didn't have the confidence to push on the factory. He had the right idea. Definitely had the right idea with the mortars and the infantry. But the other thing he could have done is just like smoked his infantry off and pushed through. Um, but ideally what you want to do is do both. You want to smoke this, then you want to use your mortars to hit the pans of grenadiers as you come through the smoke and uh, do the job that way but I mean as you can see I'm actually using Panzer 1Cs as well as the Flam Panzers at really close range um, to like annihilate the infantry as it comes towards me so make making sure I use armored vehicles to take out infantry is just like so damn important so since I've now got a bit of respite from the uh, AI I'm bringing up some AT guns to the right side just to uh, help um, my teammates Fend off against Sky Papa because Siladar is like busy defending the town with the uh, third Volshimjaeger. He's kind of neglected this right side, so it's up to myself and my 352nd teammate to to hold the line here. So Pack 38 being brought up, I'm bringing up a Pack 40 as well there, and those will hopefully be enough to hold back the third Canadian player. I'm moving up really hard with the. Panzergrenz here, Panzer II looks also moving up the road. Gonna get that off the road before the M3 gun can kill it. The good thing about the looks though is it has the chance to kill off enemy AT guns quite quickly. So there is that to work with, but more infantry just flooding on down here. Really want to solidify this left side. Since we are playing a 3v5, if I can just demolish this AI, then I can help focus elsewhere, like on this far right side. So I'm basically going to go all in, try and crush the AR on this left side, and uh, win the game for our team, because I've already dealt with the player, and, um, and the AI is the easy part. As you can see, the AI just kind of suicides. And as long as you provide adequate crossfire, um, they just run into your AT guns like all the time. And it's kind of crazy. The pack 40 unloaded on this left side now. That's engaging this Ram 2 at max range. We managed to take out the Kangaroo there as well. Pack 40 having a go.
He is going to be strafed by the Tempest. Which is going to force him to uh, fall back into the tree line there. But I'm actually bringing up the ME109 to try and shoot that down. I instead bring it all the way over to the left. And I'm trying to look at if I can get a kill onto one of these aircraft. I was kind of scared that this was another fighter, but it wasn't. So I was able to bring in my own fighter and win the engagement against the Tempest, which is exactly what, exactly what we like to see. A lot of AA opens up onto my aircraft. Fortunately, both of them just about managed to get out alive, even if they do both have oil leaks. All right, meanwhile, over here, Hans Grenadier takes out M22. Pioneers are pinning down the M3 gun with the Pac-40 also doing the same. I use the looks to help finish it off. And that's going to open up the chance for my Panzer II looks to push even further. As you can see, we are making a lot of ground here. Enemy recon spotted. Actually, there's a bazooka squad. Just gets wrecked. And uh, yeah, just going to continue on forwards. Quite content just sitting in the factory and pushing on this left side. But meanwhile, the Pac-40 is doing the job on the right side. And that is just holding the line. And yeah, we've lost a lot of uh, ground here. But like I said, it's exactly where I said. This area of ground is just so hard for like third Volshimiega to deal with because they don't have the A T until later on. I'm going to lose a unit of Panzergrins there to uh, close range engagement with some airborne rifles. But as soon as I get my vehicles into position, um, I will start to do a lot of damage. And I've also brought up my own Flak 37 mils now uh, just to provide me with the AA to stop the uh, enemy from strafing my ground forces. So a lot of troops on the ground. And I'm going to start to bring in some Panzer 4s. I've also got another Flam Panzer there to help me push through some of this infantry. So the idea here is just to have like Panzer Grenadiers or Pioneers supported by a Flam Panzer and a range of armoured vehicles like the Lux and the Panzer Fours and so on. But this Lux here demolishing that uh, AT gun after it misses its first shot. And that is the beauty of 20mm autocannons. Another AT gun there waiting to be killed. We're just trying to get into a line of sight of it and then I can just kill it off nice and easy. It does manage to take out my half track and does manage to take out the looks in the end. Get a little bit over ambitious. 251.9 going to be uh, slamming the infantry as it comes towards me. You can see the AI has been forced to use glider rifles already so I know that they are pretty low on availability of troops. So as long as I continue to push I might be able to make it quite far up the left flank and on the right flank all we need to do is hold. So Pack 40 been hit a little bit more but doing the job for now. Focke Wolf 190 coming in with the bombs there. Gonna bomb out the kangaroo. As long as we create some form of resistance on this right side, the opponents aren't going anywhere, so that's nice. And, uh, well, with all the bazookas everywhere as well, it's just going to be an absolute nightmare for, like, any vehicles to move through. So just continuing the same thing on this left side, the 251.9 taking on the infantry alongside this half-track. The Flampans is coming up to join. Also got a couple more looks on the way, accompanied by the uh, Panzer IVs. So the Panzer IVs are here to uh, take care of the M22s and the uh, lighter vehicles coming out of the 101st, with the lighter tanks that is. Bazookas there managed to sneak up and take out my half track, but blow up the Bazooka squad with a grenade. ME109 G2 coming in. Gonna be rocketing a Jeep on the road. Get rid of that 
a T gun. Or at least try to. Now what I'm doing here, charging the Stuart with the looks. Now if that M5A1 doesn't hit its first shot, the likelihood I'm going to pin this down before it can fire again is quite high. It does manage to get another shot off because it was probably so scared. Um, it wasn't very accurate. So what I'm doing, just getting as close as I can so I can penetrate the six uh, armor. And I'm going to go and tr try and go for the kill there, but with stuff being pinned down, the looks just like changes targets automatically. But there I have to tell it to uh, fire again. But I mean, the looks does did its job. Hurt a lot of those units, put a lot of pressure on that side. Revealed two AT guns up there. So I know what I'm working with. And um, a bit reckless, but did the job. Panzer IVs pushing up here. Pioneers holding position there. Got another AT gun here. Got a Pioneer Führer coming up to provide the veterancy. So just sorting out this right side. And unless they're going to push all the way to, through to the spawn, we've pretty much always got an advantage across the map by the rifles being taken out there. So what I really want to do is be able to move through or move forwards all of these Panzer Grenadiers and in order to do that what I need is this sort of like tank support because if I try and move forwards with all these Panzer Grenadiers and I don't have this tank support nearby all that's going to happen is I'm going to get hit by the enemy fire support and uh, be forced back to the factory again or maybe even not forced back just have my stuff killed and then lose the factory so I've got to be really careful when I push forwards I mean it is the AI so I'm a bit more confident but still you know like there is these M1 guns and stuff I need to worry about see the Befell Panzer IV there engaging that M1 gun at range. M1 gun doesn't have any veterancy so I'm hoping it doesn't hit. In that case manages to bounce but managed to get direct on target there and take out the M1 gun so we're good. P38 Lightning not really doing too much we do have plenty of AA. AA has been slowly moving forwards with me finally break through the uh, rifles from the 4th Armoured player here. Make some ground up the road and what I'm going to do is try and probe that with a couple of my fast moving tanks. So just bringing in uh, my reinforcements here. Pushing hard through the factory. Back 40 trying to do the job there. Pathfinder as well. On this right side, not too much changing. I've literally just got the pack 38 just attack moving forwards. They're really focused on this ATA at the moment, so not too much to worry about. I've made so much ground on this left side. But the AI doesn't really stand a chance. Another one of their tanks going down there to a Panzer IV. And the ME109 taking out that airborne rifle. Again, they lose more ground. And now things really start to get to roll. As I'm bringing up the uh, extra Panzer IVs to the left side, that enables all of this infantry to start moving forwards. The Pioneers, the Panzergrens. Now this is kind of a minefield to push through. I really don't like pushing through all of these buildings but it is possible and uh, I wasn't too worried that the AI would know how to exploit that so yeah just continuing to move up here any units that we spot just get taken out yeah they have an M3 gun but M3 guns not good enough to take out a Panzer IV and well I can strafe it with the uh, ME109 to uh, kind of panic it as I continue to push up and you can see the M3 gun there because it's a little bit of panic probably didn't hit doesn't really have the uh, HE to do the job anyway or AP to do the job and uh, this is actually one of those BO Panzer IVs with the uh, off map artillery and that's uh, like accompanying a normal Panzer IV to get the job done there Panzer IVC goes down but uh, just continuing to move forwards with all of my infantry here 
you can see the AI is uh, really quite struggling to uh, mount any form of defense. Now the other thing I'm going to do here is uh, spot that there's like a huge salient forming. So I had this brilliant idea that I might be able to actually uh, cap both of these land spawns. As you can see, like the fourth armor player is still coming in with his troops. He's still trying to make. He's still trying to break out here against my teammate. But what I could probably do is just cut off his reinforcements entirely there. And um, we'll gain like loads of ground by doing so. And I can tell just simply by how far up this is pushing. Like look at the, look at the amount of ground there is in front of my half track. That's how I know there's nothing there. So just going to fast move down the road, unload at position at this town at the end of the road. And uh, hopefully nothing comes in and kills them in the meantime. It's a little bit risky. I mean, all that has to happen is some, they bring in like an M8 Greyhound or like an M4A1 like here, for example, and they just kill the unit. But if it's timed correctly, then they won't bring in anything in and it will be job done. So yeah, just a, a really nice sort of urban engagement here. 251.9. Panzer Grenadiers moving from building to building. Got the flam panzer in there, panzer fours still managing to find line of sight through all of these buildings. Do get rocket striked by Chris, or well, that's by the AI, the P47 Thunderbolt coming in on there onto the panzer fours. But as you can see, we are pushing a plus two now because, well, we made it. Panzer Grenadier found its way to the spawn. We also have the 251 there. I'm actually putting it on return fire and uh, hiding it in one of these bushes to uh, basically keep the corridor open and make sure we keep that uh, territory there. But basically, with that occurring, um, the fourth armor player actually surrenders. And what we're going to see is the AI try and clean up my little excursion into their lines. So this. Uh, half track and Pans Grenadier again we managed to get to both land spawns and cut them off so job done there Tempest comes in gets onto the back of uh, Siladar's uh, Volker Wolf 190 unfortunately and shoots that down but plenty of AA here I'm also bringing up uh, some more AA there I've got uh, an 88 on the left side, and we do manage to shoot down that Tempest as it flies over my AA. Another M1 gun brought up is going to get hit and killed off by my Panzer IV. The Panzer IVs on the road here are very much still alive and are being harassed by the M10 destroyers. But not too much to worry about. So yeah, the AI comes across from the left side land spawn to uh, cut me off and bring over the M4A1 from the right side. And basically what they're doing is, is looking for the unit that's uh, causing the capture and uh, with them cutting this off they can bring in reinforcements from these land spawn again and they bring in um, a Stuart and it literally rips apart my Panzer Grand Squad and forces it sur to surrender. Now, in the town here, again, another tank comes in. It's the uh, half track hard, but uh, Panzergrenz are going to get a free kill there. So, still worth having those units in those positions. So, they got back to the territory, but still a plus two in our favour. Uh, our opponents still aren't really doing enough on the right side to make a difference. and. Well, there is a plenty of fireflies moving our way, but it's a bit late. It's a bit late. We're f five minutes until victory with the uh, plus two. I'm pushing through really, really hard onto the AI here. You can just see how hard I'm trying to push here. I'm bringing up even more infantry to help this go through. Panzer fours there. Going to be winning the engagement against the M10s. I've got like the looks here, for example, at close range, supported by the mortar, taking on the glider rifles. 
felt like I was really playing well in this game. It's like the constant support that I had from all of my units as I continued to move forwards. And using like the mortar effectively as I continued to move up. Like making that play with the uh, the land spawns there and cutting them off is really nice. And the great thing is I still have the Panzergrens here to, to cut, sort of cover that land spawn. So 61% territory lead as we continue to push against two AI now on the left side. On the right side, Sky Papa still trying to make some ground and codron has got a lot of points invested. He's kind of tried to bypass the town and push through but it's just it's just not as much ground here to be had as there is on like the entire left side of the map from us. Like we just made so much ground, it's insane. And look at the amount of flak AD8s in the middle of the map now. Oh lord, you would not want to be a plane flying over all of that. That's just scary. Got two pack 40s on this road now as well with the Panzer 4J. Anything that tries to come up here is just getting absolutely wrecked. And these pack 40s, they are the bane of like Hellcats and stuff. This Panzer 4J taking on two M5A1s. That's easy enough. We've also got the Befell Panzer 4 coming up as well. Job done. Lovely. Oh, look at that. M7 priests getting wrecked at the spawn again. One more rocket. See how worth it we can make that uh, Panzer Grenadier. I was amazed how many times this Panzer 4J missed actually. That M5A1 should have been dead a long time ago. The Fell Panzer 4 comes over and shows him how it's done. On this right side, Typhoon coming in with the bombs to take out the Pack 40. I'm bringing in a bunch of uh, Panzer 4s here. Got basically a couple of combos going on. Two Panzer Fours here, a bunch of Panzer Fours here, and the idea is to have the Panzer Fours just like tuck up behind these tree lines, so that if they try and push on us with the like Wolverines and the Fireflies and so on, we can still penetrate them. So you can see I've got them both sort of fast moving, and then got them attack moving behind the tree line there. And if anything comes into line of sight down this road, for example. We still have a chance to kill it. There's also some great off-map coming in from Siladar here, which means that my Panzer Force could probably rush the Fireflies if they get pinned down. There, Focke-Wolf 190s. Going to be killing off the Typhoon Bomber, which is good. And yeah, just again, continuing the push here. With those uh, M10s falling back, I can get these Panzer 4Js really, really close to the edge of this tree line. And well, meanwhile, I've pretty much broken all the way through to the land spawn with the AI. And they're just completely boned. Anything that comes in just gets killed off. Getting so many points from this game. ME109 there getting on the back of the Typhoon as well. Wolf 190 getting on the back of that Typhoon. Lovely stuff. Two more planes going down. Damn good job. Off map hits the mark. Fireflies are all falling back. That was some really nice off map. Ideally I would have been able to chase them with the Panzer Fours, but I'm being absolutely spammed by the Sextons here, as you can see. And the uh, 25 pounders. And just at the end of the game, there wasn't actually much of the Allied forces left on the map. It just took so much. And I'm just killing all the reinforcements as they come in on that left side. Crazy. So after 34 minutes and 5 seconds, we are victorious as we meet. We reach the score limit. And there you have it. 6,055 kills to 1,615 losses. Pretty damn good. 
Celadon, unfortunately, not doing particularly well. And um, uh, Groom, Groomacy, Groomsy, or Grew MSI. Um, he got negative KD, but definitely provided a lot of presence in the middle of the map and on the right side. Um, really helped hold up the map in general, um, where I just sweeped in and picked up all the kills. Really, really good stuff. So that was a classic 3v4. If we have a look at the kills, these 251.9s, God, they pay themselves off every time. The ME109 G2 BR21 also shot down the Typhoon at the end there, got plenty of kills for us and did a lot of damage. Pack 38 killed two M22s and then an M10. Panzer II looks took out two M22s, an M3 and an M1 gun. This Pack 38 on the right side took out two kangaroos and a firefly. Don't think the Pack 40 did too much. That was the one that was moving up the river. Pack 40 on the right, however, that took out a Ram 2 and the Wolverine, so it paid itself off. Lovely stuff. Panzer IVs coming in and picking up loads of M5A1 kills as the AI spammed those towards me. The uh, field battery picking up some glider rifles and pathfinders there. That was the field battery from the BEO Panzer IV, I think. Has a separate kill sheet. And um, pack 40 in the mid. Again, I think that's just AI spam towards me. So just loads of tanks. And towards the end, a bunch of Typhoon kills, which gave me like another thousand points worth of kills. But uh, a jolly good game. And hopefully you guys enjoyed me showing off my prowess with the 9th Panzer. Really, really, really like that division. A lot of people hate it and don't really like it very much, but I think it's really, really nice. Probably one of the most well-balanced and fun divisions to play from the new DLC. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.